Do you know why women fart when they pee? No. No. It's because they kind of shake it, so they've got to blow dry it. <laughs> I don't fart, of course. Of course not, no. You and cats and the queen. What, what's tonight sponsored by? Tonight's sponsored by some shit we've made up. <laughs> some Negroni cocktail that you bought mixed with a uh, bramble gin liqueur. Um, so it's not disgusting, but the Negroni is on its own. Fair warms the cockles though. Mm. Yes, absolutely. So, you'll be wondering what I'm going to cook in tonight, no doubt. Yes. I'm going to be cooking a rack of lamb. Not a rack of lamb, that's a country in the Middle East. But a rack of lamb. So, Ooh. I'll come to that in a minute. The first thing I'm going to go on... I've never done that before. ...is my potatoes. Potatoes! So, oven preheated to 200. Unless it's a fan, 180. Tray with a bit of grease poof on it. And uh, we'll need some oil, some rosemary, and of course, my good friend, seven year out of date time. So I've got rooster potatoes here. And you want to slice these as thin as you can. If you've got a mandolin, even better. It's a good idea just to cut an end off because it's not going to do anything. You better watch your fingers. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. This isn't the sort of mandolin you can play. No. Although the strings on one of those buggers could probably cut your fingers. You yeah. play the mandolin, don't you? I do, pretty badly, yeah. Nope, I am well aware of my limited ability. Okay, so do that with both tatties. And I'll show you the next step. So once you've got your tatties all sliced, like I say, it is worth getting a slicer. But if you can get them as thin as that, great. Um, so, some oil, olive, rape, vegetable, whatever. Maybe a tablespoon or so. Give it a, a shimmy around. A little bit more. So, I'm going to sprinkle some uh, rosemary in there. Good bit of dried rosemary. You can use fresh if you like, of course. And some thyme, some salt and pepper. In fact, I'm just going to use Kunzel salt for this. much. Sweep your hands in there. Give it a good mix. Right. So just like a deck of cards, pile them up onto your baking tray. They're probably going to collapse anyway in the oven. Roughly about the same height. Oh, uneven number, we'll be fighting over that. Your hands are washed, but keep the bowl that you've just uh, used that in because you're going to need it again. And you don't need to wash it. So, Put this in the oven and they should take about half an hour, maybe 
40 minutes tops. Dep all depends on the tatty that you're using. In the meantime, I've got uh, some veg for a trivet that will go in the, the bottom of the pan. Uh, some garlic, just give it a squash. So you even keep like the skins and yeah, stuff cause, on? Yeah, because we're not going to be eating this, this is going to be sieved. Okay. So, I mean, you could cut your garlic. I've even got, because I'm using some tomatoes, I've got the vines from that. So put them to one side. I'm going to put this pan on. Normally when I seal meat, I put it on as high as I can. But in this case, I'm just putting it on sort of medium high heat. Now, I've already prepped this lamb. But if you buy either a best end of lamb or a, a rack of lamb, a good sharp knife. Unfortunately this was frozen and it's broken the ribs but when you buy this normally from a supermarket or a butcher even if it's French trimmed this hasn't been scraped. You want to scrape these bones and get like this fibrous sinew off them. Like like this look I've missed that bit. You want to get that fibrous sinew off. And also when you buy lamb from a butcher or supermarket, it's often got this layer of sort of a thin membrane between the skin and the fat. So I've used my knife and just gently it's a fascia. peeled it away. Yeah, I suppose it is a fascia. And as you can see, I've scored the lamb. So don't chuck that because that's going in for, for gravy. So back to your bowl a little bit more oil in there rosemary goes brilliantly with lamb so does thyme but I'm not putting thyme in there why not? because I don't want to because that'll just mix up with the rosemary and... Well, no, it's not that, it's just... I just don't fancy put the time in. So a good bit of pepper. I'm going to use a Kunsel salt again. Good bit of salt. And then I've got a bit of tin foil. And you want to cover the rib bones because they'll get burnt in the oven. Fold that over, stick it on the ribs like that. And then, well, if the bowl was bigger, but a good rub onto your lamb, get into the fat there. You could really use whatever you want. Uh, lamb's one of these meats that actually goes well with quite a, a number of things. Spices in general take very well, like cumin or coriander. So once that pan's hot, we'll come back to see it. So. so when the pan's almost hot, so this isn't searing, I'm wanting to render the fat down first. So when the pan's almost hot, like an iron hot, put it in the fat side down. You need this pan again, so don't do anything with it. I'm wondering why they, they cover the bones with the foil. It's all fancy. Is it just so they don't burn them? It's just so they don't burn them. Yeah. So this takes about 20 minutes in the oven, depending on how you like it cooked. Um, I like my lamb pretty blushing. Ha 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 ha, fat 
fatty, fatty. Probably blush now, it's been teased. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave that in there. I'm not going to move it, let the fat render down a little bit. I'm going to put the fan on because it's going to start getting smoky and uh, come back when I'm ready to turn it. Right. So once you've got a good colour onto the fat, seal the rest of the, the lamb. You see there's quite a lot of fats come out of there, we're going to leave that in the pan so because that's all flavour. And seal the ends. And back on your plate. So, take that off of there. My lamb scrotum, my veggies. Get them up to toss about, let them absorb some of that fat. On a little bit of kinsel salt. Some pepper. This is going to flavour your gravy when we come to make it. No, I was going to add something, but I don't need to. Lamb on top. Put it away. Now, don't put it in the oven until you think the potatoes are nearly ready. And by that, I mean you think they're going to be another 10, 15 minutes, perhaps 20 minutes. So, do the fatty check. So, I'm going to stick that in. Obviously, you need an oven proof pan. I'm going to time that. I'm going to time that for 15 minutes because uh, I need to get it out and rest it and make the gravy. So put the fan back on. I'm back from my drinking. So while you're lambing that or in the oven, you can prep your veg. So I'm having asparagus and uh, courgette. So asparagus has got a natural breaking point near the end. Don't really want to eat the ends actually, you can chuck them in with your lamb if you want. No point in wasting them. I just cut each one into maybe three sections. And then your courgette, top and tail it, cut in half, cut it into quarters, and I'll just uh, cut that into three, and then your tomatoes just into quarters as well. And you want to get a pan to saute them in with a little bit of butter. All this will be done around about the same time as the, the lamb's out of the oven. Uh, that's, that's your timing and uh, a little bit of garlic. It's a rare occasion where you will see me just use one clove of garlic. So yeah, that's ready just to go. 
whenever your your lamb's resting. So yeah, I'll get back to my, my cocktail. So after 15 minutes, check your lamb. You can if you want to stick a knife into it and touch your lip. I'm not going to do it because I'm trusting by how it's looking that it, it, it's got a spring to it. I'm going to take the lamb off, put it on a separate plate, just in a warm place. Got a bit of foil that I've been using, so get the foil there, wrap it in foil. Now, obviously, this handle's hot, but it's back on the heat. So you want to cook the, the veggies that have been in the oven, your, your trivet, you want to cook them until they're a bit softer. That'll take a two, three minutes and then we'll come back after that. Right. So I've added a wee splodge of tomato ketchup. I would normally add a little bit of tomato puree. Ketchup's alright because it's lamb, it's a, a rich meat, so there's vinegar and sugar in there. So a bit of sharpness and a bit of sweetness will be fine. So we've got a bit of colour on the veg here and that caramelised flavour will, will help. So we're going to have red wine with this, nice Pinot Noir. So half a glass is in there and you want to reduce that down so there's no alcohol in it. Shouldn't take too long. It's always good to use the wine that you're going to be drinking because it matches. I'm not a wine snob by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I wouldn't use cheap wine. But not that this is expensive, but I wouldn't use a poorly tasted wine for cooking because if you wouldn't drink it, don't don't cook with it. You can maybe use it for a like a pickle or a marinade or something like that. You know, people maybe marinate meat and wine for a few days to let the acids do their job. So there we go, look, it's nearly reduced the weight of nothing. And I'm just going to add some boiling water from the kettle. I'm going to put quite a lot in there because we're going to reduce that down again. Just reduce it down until you've got maybe a third of that liquid left. And with that, put your pan on for your vegetables. I've got them on three, so that's a medium high heat. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's reduced by about half. So I'm going to be straining this in a minute, but I'm going to put in a spoonful, a dessert spoonful, of my grandmother's, my 87 year old grandmother's homemade bramble jelly. Um, bramble jelly or red currant jelly is excellent with uh, rich meats and game. So stir this in. Thank you. 
you want to push, push that through. Get rid of any drags. Pour that back in there. Let it reduce a little bit more. And I'm going to get some wee splash of oil. And a good knob of butter. Approximately 25 grams. So melt the butter in the pan. So when you finally remember what ring you've you switched on, give me your garlic. It's not that hot, you see. So give me some salt. I'm going to put some chilli flakes in here, just for eggs and shittles. And then my courgettes. A little bit more salt on top of them. them gently to medium high heat. Keep an eye on your gravy, make sure your lamb's okay. I'm gonna use good old bisto. Trying to park a bit of this stuff. Nothing wrong with it. So get the desired consistency of your gravy. You turn that down to one just for a simmer and you want to just give your courgettes a wee toss. Make sure that they get coated. And just leave that to simmer away nicely. So I've transferred my gravy into a jug. And then my asparagus. Give that a good toss around. And out with your tatties. At this stage you can put your plates in the oven to warm up. Mm. So your veggies are just about cooked. And with your tomatoes. And just for a little bit of steam. Just a wee splash of water. And you could use that tin foil. Get yourself tidied up and get your plates out. It's as simple as that. So let the meat rest. For as much juice as come out, pour them into your gravy. Discard it's important to rest the meat. Yeah that, that meat has been rested as long as it was cooked for. Mm. Is it so all the juices come out? 
Mm. And so all the juices get absorbed back in and it oh. gives the meat a chance to cook evenly. Yeah. So it's so more moist. You just cook between the bones, uh, cut between the bones even. Up and get my plates out. Right. Veggies have got a bit of colour on them. Should be soft but still have a bit of bite. So to plate up. Couple of these. I've never had tatties stuck like that before. You yeah. know? Nope. Well, obviously I'm not posh. I have posh of a dad. Maybe posh of a family throws or our brochure for some of these <laughs> less fortunate places. Not cooter, you know, it's proper place like cooter. Cooter! Cooter. Don't be shy with your veggies either. Okay, so three bits of lamb each. Pour that juices into the gravy. The end pieces are the chef's perks. Yeah. We're both going to eat them. It's just for the presentation purposes. And. Whoa, look at that. One with a bit of gravy. So. Wow. Rack of lamb with a uh, stacked potatoes, courgettes, asparagus, and tomato with a bramble jelly gravy. Happy crappy cooking. Mmm. What's stuck on my bone? Maybe later. Cool. Mmm. How was that? Oh, I love lamb. Lamb and duck is my two favourites. Not together. Well, maybe. I think a duck would be tighter than a lamb, though. Oh, to eat. All right. Oh, God. A lamb. Mm. What did you think about it? <laughs> yeah. Just coking at the thought of me. <laughs> no, stop it. Um... Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was tasty, but my favourite was the tatties. <laughs> Got a fucking English girlfriend. <laughs> Potato! Anyway, that was bloody nice. Look at the plate. Mm. Yep. Mm. Happy crappy cooking. <laughs>